Hello, Internet. How have you been keeping? Well, I hope. I've been preparing and planning quite a bit and teaching my classes, which has been going pretty well, I think. A lot of new tricks to figure out. And I just had a great meeting with a musician that is going to be my uh, model for the last class of this semester. So that went really well. How's your COVID quarantine been going? <laughs> Hopefully, not all who are, but I know a lot of people are having a rougher time than I am. I largely, uh, I've learned as a freelancer for 30 years to roll with the unforeseen and difficulties. This is definitely a, a different situation than usual, but a lot of the same rules apply. So I at least have a sense of what to do, a strategy, modified, of course. Um, I don't know how the year's going to go financially. I hope there's some freelance work coming in, but nothing is there yet. Um, I've just been talking to my rep about what the plan is for promotions, so that's in the works and then sort of cool so this is may and may in well a lot of places but canada for sure is comics month right now so it's when all the festivals would normally happen and unfortunately can't however what's happened is a lot of them have moved uh, in some form or another online so vancaf tcaf and mcaf or fbdm all would have taken place uh this month um, along with uh, a couple of other events. I can't remember which ones other ones fall in May off the top of my head. Um, but what many of them, and some that aren't even normally in May, have done is team together, uh, and they're going to all use the hashtag CANCAF. So hashtag CANCAF, C-A-N-C-A-F, Canadian Comics Art Festival. And it's going to be a virtual one. So a lot of them are holding varying degrees of online virtual programs MCAF, my local convention, uh, convention festival, is doing one of the most uh, involved, and I'm participating. So I'm going to host a comic jam on the 21st in the evening on, on Zoom. Um, we'll use Agi again. Uh, and I mean, there'll be other tools, and people can participate in different ways. It'll be a bit of a flex to it. Uh, but it's part of the programming, which is starting this week. So every Wednesday for the next three weeks, there's going to be panel talks um conversations with creators who've done interesting things with Quebec and then uh the tw was it the 21st or the 20 uh, yeah 21st or 22nd there's the Bidilis Bidilis I'm not sure if I say that properly um the it's a it's an award held by or in tangent with the FBDM and um BD Quebec I believe as well there's a collaboration there um and uh so we can do that. They're going to be doing that virtually as well. It's, it's going to all be done through Facebook and YouTube, and I believe there'll be some Zoom-like stuff, but I'm not sure of the details. Um, and then I'm I'm so like the jam will definitely be on Zoom, and we'll see what else. Uh, I'm also going to uh, be giving a presentation, and I thought I would take a minute to talk to you guys about that because I think it's kind of cool. Uh, I you know I was a bit of a a voracious consumer of, of interesting comics uh, in my early days, and one of them, early on, if you won't mind my sharing with you, I have here the collection. I also have the individual singles because I, I bought them as they came out, but Cages was, I was already a fan from I discovered uh, violent cases and signal and noise while I was still in high school, I want to say. Um, I also really loved his work on a lot of comics that I was checking out. Even caught a little bit of his art. Arkham Sword? I think it was an Arkham Sword. Bunch of stuff in the 80s. Um, this is a really cool book. But in particular, there's a scene in it. It's romantic. 
It was a kind of romantic book in many ways. And uh, these two characters, oops, I skipped ahead. There we go. So these two characters are going to meet and have a conversation. They're newly discovered neighbors. I believe uh, they can see each other's balconies from their apartments, something like that. And one of the things I have to actually do in the next two weeks is reread these to refresh my memory about all the details that I have sort of lost track of since the last time I read them. Um, and they go to a jazz bar and sit down for a conversation. There's a lot of repetition, but I always admired Dave's knack uh, and, and on display in this case for keeping it still pretty interesting and novel, although it's very storyboard at this point. It's still, there's a lot of pantomime and body language to go with also very economical dialogue. But then right around here, we zoom away for a minute and then things transition, like the music takes over. And they just sort of smile and appreciate each other. See, he just said, oh, I could talk all night about my painting. And then they do. And it's a dance. Really interesting page flow. And it becomes abstract and symbolic. And I always like pointing this out to my students is why I, I, I have something of a presentation kind of prepared. I'm going to elaborate on it, but they're talking in pictograms. I love the various kinds of experiments with symbolism. And then it gets really abstract. And then all of the cutlery comes crashing down. And the moment comes into focus and they realize half past two. We're the last to leave. Um, so there's more to say about that, but I don't want to give away the presentation before it is ready because that would be premature. Uh, but I'll be talking about this uh, for FPDM and in contrast with. So I think I first read about this on uh, the comics journal, maybe? I'm not sure if I read the journal or interview or the article first. Close in time. But I came across this book. I found a copy of it, and I think I it caught my attention because I had been aware of it from this interview. Um, at a comic shop, I think it was called Fischt, uh, near where I lived at the time, in the Plateau in Montreal. And it's an amazing... So, Fabrice, uh, I'm going to... I'm guessing you say it new, but I'm not sure if you pronounce the D or not. I think it's silent and new. Fabrice new. Um, journal three. There are two more before this, and at least one after. I'm not sure if he did five. I can't remember right now. Uh, he's a remarkable uh, artist and storyteller, and one of the founders of Ego X, uh, an independent uh, avant garde publisher of comics in the, I guess it would be the 90s and aughts, the 2000s. I'm not sure what's up with them because when I was looking things up, like their their URL has been co-opted by a porn site, which is unfortunate. Um, so one of the things that struck me in my initial studies, I've started researching Fabrice's work first because I felt like I was very familiar with a lot of Dave's. So he was a more known quantity to me. And when I got this book, it was actually so personal narrative, uh, sad omission. I can barely read this book. My French, although I've been here for 20 years, is terrible, and that's a byproduct of being dyslexic. And I've tried, but I'm not, it's a problem. Um, so I've read portions of it, I've had portions of it read to me, and I understand what the book's about, although there's a lot of, I don't have the same deep appreciation of someone who can just read it easily. So, but there's a few things I'll, I'm gonna point out. Like at the beginning, this tree, and there's a thing about. Uh, not bearing fruit. So Fabrice is gay, and uh, this book is a lot about his um, his identity as a homosexual in a community that wasn't very accepting and all the homophobia he encountered, but also, uh, in particular, on an unrequited obsession with a, a straight guy who was a good friend and fellow cartoonist, and he, was, he had a crush on. Um, and a lot of the story ends up being about that. And there's a moment in the scene I want to show you that this comes up. And it comes up again at the end. Spoilers. Um, so it's a, a key symbol. And if, if the three times, as far as I can tell, I've looked through that it shows up is in the beginning, the end, and the scene that I, caught my eye. And so 
I saw this book. The rendering is amazing. He has this whole idea about... So that's Dominic, the character who the book is dedicated to and is in in a way about, although he's very much a narrative tool for Fabrice exploring his, his own story and evolution. I also believe I have the early edition, and there's a later edition that I read is more revealing and frank, and that's interesting to me. I, I can't really be too upset that I don't own it because I, I can barely read it as is, but I would be curious to see the pages that are absent from this edition. Um, but it's still an impressive piece of work. And he had this whole idea about, I was going to say, like, this is based on a real person, this is named after, but that's not apparently what he looks like. The likeness is a, an amalgam, and for many of the characters, the likenesses are amalgams, this is what I understand anyway. And people have been upset about either the idea of them, so Dominic actually is pretty accepting, but other people have been upset about the idea of being captured for his his books, they feel like it's appropriation, even when they're not the person, but they're the likeness, and vice versa, when they're the person, but not the likeness. So he didn't continue making this sort of uh, autobiographical journal much longer after this one is sort of his big epic. It's quite thick. Um, there's an impressive one after, but I don't think it's as thick. And then I think he's he's done a bit more, but it's it's um, his work's evolved and shifted in other ways. And I, I think reading some of the interviews, part of that is the the political and personal difficulties in navigating this genre so right away I'd like to establish this is a very a story that's been very truthful I, I I lost track of my point so this is not actually what Dominic looks exactly like although he's a, a, a stand-in and he's a very concerned with this character feeling real so that we as readers can relate to him as a real person not a caricature um, so his his verac veracity his verisimilitude, ver verisimilitude I'm missing some syllables in there, I think. Um, uh, his commitment to, to realism, a lot of it's about, not that he has anything against symbolism, they can see here when he's playing with color, he actually regularly explores symbolism, but he feels like having this level of your at your work a lot gives you the full range of all that's possible beneath it in terms of getting into the more abstract. So, you know, like a technical uh, philosophy. Chapter five. Which is interesting because it's chapter five, and the scene that I showed you in Cages is the fifth book in Cages. Now, Cages has only ten books, and this has considerably more than ten chapters, but I thought that was a funny coincidence. And this is a meeting. We've been introduced to the character already. We're very early in the story, so it's not the middle of the book the way it is in Cages. Um, but this is sort of like a, a, a pivotal moment that wordlessly, from this page on, communicates... Fabrice's rapture, but also the disconnect that will define the rest of their narrative. And again, so we have that repetition, a uh, slightly different navigation of this issue of Cherescaro and how to use that to here he's using the sort of positive negative imagery to help contrast them, except notice how in this row he switches to echo that and he smiles. So I get this communication of even though there's this contrast, they become more alike. And skip the head a little there. Maybe they're talking. And right around here, and committing fully, we move into surrealism. His page flow. If you know what I'm talking about here, look at this. Beautiful arch to help define to the point of the hands come in so in terms of their position they're in that kind of sweet entry point corner boom no word balloons to compete or direct so it's all about layout up down across that way lovely you come up and there that movement's there and then a lovely into the dance and so now we enter the equivalent symbolistic scene and music becomes part of it again but the movement is more the focus of Fabrice's work and a lot of it's dance and birds and a plane but then we get the abstraction and pictogram speech I love this the talking hands one thing that I, I picked up from his interviews is, is for him his symbolism is very literal 
rather than psychological, so we can take these to be very, that's particular music, not just a standard of music, that is uh, Jackson Pollock, and just, these are keystones of impressions, Picasso, Hopper, Tesla, I believe, is that Tesla? Freud. And so he talks about small family, looks like a sibling and parents. Not small, huge. Suddenly feels alone. And there's this pause. And the syncopation that's with developing stutters. Father's out of the picture. Broken branch. Full branch. Look at the registration shifts. So sort of natural sync, but he's filling with black again or something. And then click, click, like a switch and a broken branch. And that's the end of that chapter. So I'm going to be doing a long form analysis and comparison. I've been doing some reading up on both of them. I came across this great. Uh, Fabrice was, uh, he has a, a profile in this collection. These are um, BAM, Beaux Arts Magazine, put out a couple of these sort of like annual dedications to comics. Uh, that's Rudolf Toppler. There's a an intro in here, but there's a. Did I miss it? Oh, there it is. So this is a, again a wordless comic history X by Fabrice, and I'd forgotten I had this, and I was looking at Fabrice's site, which is in French up to date. The English one is not, um, which is unfortunate, but I can use Google Translate. And this is for this, and I, we're very like-minded in terms of the the legacy of pictorial and symbolic meaning being the roots of what we call comics today. There's Mr. Toffler, the Yellow Kid panels. I like this repeating. Make that, that that's a lovely visual rhyme being used there. Great references. So I'll probably, I think I'm going to use this at the beginning of my talk. And I like this playful, like, there's this whole thing about, so the arts, there was the corporate arts, corporate comics, but then we have European independent underground counterculture art comics and cross-pollination, I believe is what this is meant to symbolize. And then uh, a baby muse, it's childlike compared to the ones we see here. So the the I believe it's Roman uh, French inspired uh, Roman inspired French idea of the the arts, and there were eight, and a group of people got together, uh, part of the Art New Wave movement I believe, Film New Wave, Cinema New Wave, that's it, uh, and poets and stuff like that, and declared the comics were going to be the ninth art, and the the traditional arts damned them, burned them. It's almost finished. But then along comes Scott McCloud, and da da. Happy face, etc., to be continued. And then the collection is just this amazing assemblage of samples of some of the best. It's quite a lot. So I'm thinking I'd start doing I've got a a modest library, nothing like crazy, but um, a lot of interesting books. And I've always had an eye out for uh, samplers like this that allow me to get a peek at a lot more comic artists than I would necessarily be able to afford to buy all the books of. And that gives me an idea about what I want to go look for, actually. Oh. So, yeah. That's going to be part of my engagement with FBDM this this uh, May. Um, 21st is the jam. And I think I want to say... Oh, I should look it up. I should have had this in front of me. I would have been planning. Uh, Saturday. I know it's Saturday. I forget the date right now, but I'm going to look for it while I talk. And on Saturday during the festival at 5 p.m., I'll be doing my presentation, uh, comparing those two comics and their similarities and differences. Uh, the story here is the mere reflection of what's going on here. And the uh, the um, technical work, I think, is like on par in terms of achievement, but very different approaches and, and styles. And 
I'm curious about philosophy. I, I'm, I'm going to have to go back and look up. Now that I've been reading about Fabrice's sort of creative philosophy, um, I need to look up uh, Dave's about his approach to his magic realism and, and mystical sort of symbolism that I see in cages and and uh, it's very it's very much a fairy tale. Uh, one of the things this is something that echoes one of my favorite books is books of his and Neil Gaiman's, which is Signal and Noise. Um, I should have got that out. Uh, is that and I think in Signal and Noise is only one example of this. It's like this tale of the end of the world that foreshadows what's coming. Um, and it's like the myth that informs the film that the main character in Signal Noise wants to make. But in the beginnings of Cages, we have origin stories. There's one, two, three, I'll say in the beginning, four, six, five, yeah, four different uh, I think it's four different origin stories, uh, creation stories, before we begin the story. And, of course, it begins and ends this book with a cat. And by contrast, you know, the, that tree in Fabrice's book, the, the tree here, and then at the end, the end with a tree flowering, blossoms. So similar styles of symbolism and tactics being used but for very different goals so it's a great opportunity i think to do comparative analysis i'm looking forward to that um i'm also going to be trying to raise funds i've offered to do four for now convent small convention sketches i've opened the bidding at 50 dollars, and that's for the comic legends legal defense fund and they're raising money to help retailers because comic retailers are in a tough spot right now um, so go look at sequentialpulp.ca, uh, my comic news blog, and check out the posts about, um, there's a bunch of them. So there's a fundraiser, the, C the CLLDF uh, is running, and I want to commit some money to, but you have to bid. So the bids start at $50, but I'm looking for people to like, you know, get that number up there. It's not for me. It's all going to, when the payment would be in the form of you paying the C C the C L L D F a charitable donation for the sum that we agree on, and then give me the receipt and I will go do your commission for you, um, and then hopefully, I can raise a bit of money and get a little higher. Last time I checked, they had gotten well over sixteen grand raised Canadian to help uh, retailers in in tough tough situations, paying commercial rent things like that. Um, so, that's a thing, and then there are other. BR Hero Canada is a group of Ontario-based retailers that are trying to do fundraising for the same idea. I think it's sort of in tandem. I'm not sure. Uh, i got to follow up on that. And people are trying to do things all, all over the place. So that's cool. And then I started so off talking about, like, so F FBDM, our virtual festival, will be part of that larger um, CanCAF. And if you go to uh, torontocomics.com, I think it is, the TCAF, the Toronto Comic Art Festival website, Go look there and look for CanCAF, or just Google or Twitter, hashtag CanCAF, and you'll find eventually a link that TCAF has put together of all the online virtual alternative festival um, um, uh, initiatives, that's the word I was looking for, uh, that various comics festivals that are not having their actual real festival uh, or their in-person festival in place of that they're doing twitter storms and videos and live streams and blog posts and a wide variety of efforts to give creators an opportunity to connect with audiences give audiences an opportunity to disc discover new comics and generally celebrate the medium and the canadian creation and industry of it um there will be opportunities to buy things and stuff like that, but a lot of it is free, just be there when the stream starts type stuff. So hopefully it's a big hit. Uh, go look it up. Find what you can find, enjoy, and support your local creators. And uh, if you want to check out this presentation, it will be in English. Uh, check out FBDM, uh, Google it, or MCAF, and the presentation is going to be... Oh, let me, let me do that, that follow-up. 
Saturday the 23rd. Is that right? Yeah, that would be Saturday the 23rd. Um, right here on the internet. So be good, be creative, and I'll see you then. If you want to pledge to help me make more comics and do other cool things online, you can hit me up on patreon.com slash salgood. Uh, salgood Sam, I think. Oh, so this is my brain. I had a interesting news. I had, yeah, just salgood, slash salgood, patreon.com slash salgood. So in closing news, uh, I had my first uh, virtual doctor's appointment with a neurologist. Don't worry, it's nothing serious. Uh, it's a side product, side byproduct of my ongoing efforts to improve my maintenance of being diabetic. And one of the issues that has come up is that I have funny memory issues. I'm I'm not neurotypical in a couple of ways. I'm dyslexic and I have aphantasia, and probably a few other things. And I've always had memory issues of a certain kind, um, even since I was a kid. My sense of time is kind of weird, sort of absent. It's mostly landmark based. Um, and uh, externalized, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's not, I don't have an internal sense of time. And then the ability for me to maintain routines is it's difficult. It's hard, very easy to disrupt. So uh, I've been visiting a neurologist to get it evaluated. And then well, I'm going to see him a couple, a couple more times, but they're passing me on to neuropsychologists to look at what I can do, see if I can just, just pick up some trick to try to alter my behavior. Um, I'm curious to see what the neuropsychologist has to say. Um, but there's also just sort of interesting new novel experience having a, a, a through the phone this time, but eventually we're going to do video chats, uh, doctor's consult consultation. Fascinating. Uh, we live in interesting times. So wash your hands, stay safe, uh, keep your social distancing, even if the dumb government doesn't realize it hasn't been four months yet and really clearly not enough time for things to clear up here in Montreal. Wherever you are, you know, follow local best recommendations or best practices. Uh, and that isn't necessarily what you're going to hear from a politician, unfortunately. Um, stay safe and stay creative and I'll see you around. Yeah, that's, that's how I'm going to end it.